I'm Dr. Chris Mowry. I'm a professor of biology at Barry College in Rome, Georgia, and I'm also the co-founder of a research organization called the Atlanta Coyote Project. Uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is where I went to high school. Uh, I took, of course, lots of science classes while I was in high school, physics and chemistry and biology uh, and various math courses, calculus, uh, as, as well as the standard other kinds of courses, English and history, social studies, and those kinds of things. Um, I then went to undergraduate at uh, Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where I was a biology major. And then after my undergraduate days at Wake Forest, uh, I went to graduate school here in Atlanta at Emory University, where I received a master's degree and a PhD in biology. Um, I'm an animal ecologist and I teach undergraduate courses uh, at Barry in zoology, uh, in ecology, and in conservation biology. The earlier part of my career as a research scientist, which is part of what my job entails as well, uh, involved the study of African primates. And so I did that in some really great places. I had the great fortune to spend a lot of time in Kenya and in Madagascar and in the African country of Eritrea where I studied the feeding ecology of African primates. So that was a great experience and I continue to do some of that. But uh, about 15 years ago, one of my Barry students got me involved in the study of coyotes as we started to detect them uh, more commonly on the 26,000 acre Barry College uh, campus. So that I want to give you a little background information about coyotes now. Um, first slide I'm showing you here are North American canids. Um, these are all members of the same genus, canis. When I use the word canid, I mean wolf-like mammals or dog-like mammals, I should say. So what you're seeing here are gray wolves and red wolves at the top, canis lupus and canis rufus. Then the coyote down here in the lower right hand corner Canis latrans, and then the domestic dog Canis familiaris. So these are all very closely related species, yet they are separate species. When we look at the historic distribution of wolves and coyotes in North America, what we see on this map is in the gray, which is essentially west of the Mississippi River and then on up in here into the Great Lakes, this is where gray wolves are native to. There are still some gray wolves, not as many as there used to be. So that, the gray area is the, the gray wolf historic distribution. This red area down here in the southeast where we live, that's the historic distribution of the red wolf, Canis rufus. And these green lines indicate the historic distribution of the coyote. And you can see that they pretty much overlap with the gray wolf out west. But what happened is that humans extirpated wolves. That means they killed them off. They didn't drive them completely to extinction, but they drove them to localized extinction, and we call that extirpation. So there are very few wolves left here in the northeastern part and on up into Canada. There are no red wolves in the southeast anymore other than about 30 animals that were put there uh, in coastal North Carolina at a place called Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge, and that is a managed population of red wolves. That's the only place that red wolves exist in the wild. And so as a result, the coyote filled this vacuum. So now coyotes are found throughout North America, into Central America. They'll probably get to South America. They're found in every state uh, except for Hawaii. So... Um, they really, what they have done is they replaced the red wolf here in the southeast. And so they are now essentially serving as what we call the top predator or the apex predator. So they're not exactly the same animal as the red wolf. The red wolf used to be the top predator here in the southeast or the apex predator. But again, we wiped them out. They're no longer here. The coyote moved in, and now it's essentially filling that role. Now, it's not quite the same. The coyote is as a red wolf. Coyotes are smaller than red wolves. They live in smaller groups. They require less space. And more importantly, they have broader diets. Now, the thing about apex predators, and you can kind of see it the way this diagram is drawn, is that 
while their apex predators are usually few in number, they have a significant and necessary effect on ecosystems. They keep other species in check. So we see that the coyote might be keeping foxes in check and foxes are preying upon small mammals like rats and mice or maybe even ground nesting birds or maybe rabbits. And coyotes might be consuming those items themselves directly. So they might be directly preying upon certain species or they may be limiting the populations of other species but they have a necessary impact on the overall ecosystem by keeping other species in check. And so they're very important in that role, particularly now that we no longer have red wolves in this part of the country. Coyotes can do very well in urban environments, particularly in a city like Atlanta. We have lots of green space, so we have lots of natural food items like small mammals and insects and fruits uh, like persimmons for example this coyote is eating figs right off of a tree there's a squirrel hanging out of the mouth of this coyote so coyotes have very broad diets as you can see from this list here and uh, so as a result they do very well in urban environments because these kinds of natural food items are very much available, particularly again in a city like Atlanta where we have lots of natural green space anyway. We also have lots of streams, lots of trails, lots of paths. We have the Chattahoochee River. We have culverts like that are shown in this picture right here that go under major highways. This culvert goes under I-285, a major highway in our city. It's 10 lanes of traffic and coyotes can freely cross in and out of this tunnel uh, and cross uh, across 285, for example, very easily. So they can get around very well. And then also urban habitats can provide what we call anthropogenic food sources, or in other, other words, human produced food sources. This coyote is feeding out of dog food bowls that were left outside by someone, which is not a good thing to do. So to control coyote populations, we want to limit their access to human foods, whether it's dog food or cat food or trash or compost piles or overfilled bird feeders that are attracting lots of rodents, squirrels, chipmunks, things like that. Those are all things that we can do to limit coyote populations, but they do well in urban environments. In 2015, I, along with my colleague, Dr. Larry Wilson, of the Fernbank Science Center and Emory University, uh, we started the Atlanta Coyote Project as a way to study coyotes as biologists and also to provide information to the public about these misunderstood animals. So here's our website, it's atlantacoyoteproject.org. There's all kinds of information here about coyotes. You can learn about the biology and natural history, how best to peacefully coexist and manage coyotes, the various kinds of research that we're involved in and various news articles at the bottom of the page, videos and uh, media that we've appeared in, articles. So you can check this out if you're interested, our partners. Uh, so that's our website. And one of the research projects that we've been involved in is the relationship between urban biodiversity and coyotes. Common misconception is that the presence of coyotes leads to a loss of biodiversity. In other words, they eat everything in sight, but that's just simply not how an apex predator behaves. So we conducted a three-year study in Roswell, Georgia, and recently published this paper in the journal Urban Naturalist, Species Richness Within an Urban Coyote Territory in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. And this area, as I say, it's in Roswell, um, and it was suburban green space within a neighborhood. Um, we knew that coyotes were living in this area. There was an active den site. There was reproduction going on. Coyotes were producing small litters each year of the study. But contrary to them eating everything in sight, what we found using remote cameras were 12 different species of mammals, two different species of reptiles, and 22 different species of birds. And here are pictures of some of those species that we detected, white-tailed deer and bobcats and great blue heron and river otters and rats 
And this is uh, a variety of species of uh, neotropical migrant birds. This is actually a coyote. This is obviously a rabbit. And so you can read more about this study if you'd like by clicking on the journal. You can get a, download a copy of it. And you can also watch this accompanying video that shows video of the various species that we documented. And again, this is not all that surprising because this is what apex predators do in a community. They control other species so that no one species outcompetes or becomes dominant. And it maintains a, a level of biodiversity that is healthy for the ecosystem. So, so rather than coyotes eating everything in sight, they're eating a little bit here and there. Again, remember that coyotes have very broad diets. A lot of their diet is plant-based as well. So their presence actually allows these other species to thrive. Now, if you would like to, uh, if you ever see a coyote and you would like to report your sighting, it helps us out. Uh, it's part of our study. You can go to our website and there's a link that says report a coyote sighting and it will bring you to this page. And you can simply use this map and drag the cursor. You can zoom in and out and put the cursor exactly where the sighting occurred. You can give the date and the time and tell us whether it was a sighting or an encounter, which is defined here. You can give any observations or comments or concerns that you might have here. You can give your email address if you want and then you hit submit and you'll get a submission number. And uh, if you have any video or pictures that you took, you can send those to us uh, and reference the submission number that you got. And that way we'll have it in our database. In fact, we've got a paper that we're hoping to publish soon based on thousands of reports that we have received from people uh, through our website, which has been wonderful. So I hope you uh, have gotten something out of this presentation. I wish you all the best and please visit the Atlanta Coyote Project on Facebook as well.